Hello, welcome to today's edition of Studio Army Review, where we're going to continue our look into the my exit army, the Dragon Masters. Now, I'm going to start with the Great Drakes. And you've actually, if you've watched through some of my earlier Studio Army Reviews, you may actually recognize this particular model. Uh, I originally got it uh, for this purpose. Uh, it was... It's going. It represents a female Great Drake and of the Exit Army, but I have also used this as my Tau, or I should say, Crute broadside. Uh, so you can check out my uh, Crute Army review and find out more information about that. But essentially, I just I have used the same model and took the howdah off the uh, model and just I can, I can lay this uh, blanket, colored blanket, on the back of this one too put in the Exodite Exodite Army. I'm a firm believer in making models, if you're doing conversions or uh, interpretations, something that can be modified easily to represent something completely different. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, one of the Exodite fan base codexes that I've ran across actually included an entry for Great Drakes, and they were the classic Western uh, European dragons. You know, wings and everything. <coughs> And uh, I realized that a lot of their abilities were reflected in the Hive Tyrant's abilities. Uh, the only problem was I didn't want to have to come up with a, an explanation for you know, winged versus non-winged. You have two completely different beasts. Uh, that was just getting a little bit difficult. So uh, I took a inspiration from some various insects where the male has wings and the female doesn't. So... In this case, the Great Drake is the Hive Tyrant, and if it's a male one, I put the wings on. If it's female, it looks just like the one you see in front of you. Now, <clears throat> in on Lorien, there are... Uh, I basically made the chromatic dragons from uh, the old D&D. So you've got your you know, white, black, red, green, and uh, blue. And I worked through the... Uh, steps to figure out, well, how could I represent that classic dragon aging and getting more powerful? And then how could I reflect the different weapons, especially the breath weapons they've got? And again, drawing on my experience with uh, uh, role-playing games, <clears throat> especially the old hero systems, where you have effects and then you would interpret those with some special effect. Uh, so in this case, you look at a dragon's attacks. He's got claws and a bite. He's got a tail. Well, tail biomorphs fit in real nice for the tail. Uh, you can use crushing claws, uh, additional scything talons uh, to essentially stack additional attacks on or additionally more powerful attacks into the basic hive tyrant to make it more powerful. So I was able to develop stats or uh, builds for everything from a, a young, uh, or I should say a very young, uh, Great Drake, to young, adult, um, old, and uh, uh, ancient Great Drake. Each one getting more powerful. <clears throat> and so it was actually, it, it worked out really well. Uh, so for example, uh, the basic young dragon will have its, its base stats, uh, Add to that an extra set of attacks, and you've now you've got you know exercising talents, for example, and now you've got a, 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 a young uh, you went from young to an adult. Age them a little bit more, and I decided you know you can use these some of the special abilities they've got. So, for example, there's the old adversary rule, there's regeneration, there's the horror. So I used regeneration. So once it hits adult age, or sorry, old age, sorry. Um, it has regeneration. So old, very old, and ancient have regeneration. And then uh, the very old great drakes, the older ones, get the old adversary, which is basically re-rolling failed to hit into wound rolls of one. That represents their many, many centuries of experience in, in combat. And then finally, adding to the ancient great drakes, which you know, in D&D especially are extremely fearsome, uh, the horror ability that you can give the Hive Tower fits that perfectly. So by stacking these so that the ancient 
uh, Great Drake has all three, and the very old one that just has old adversary and regeneration. It it was able I was able to actually progress this build of different aged uh, dragons. That way I could kind of make certain characters, if you will, for uh, my Lorien world. As far as attacks go, you know, breath weapons, uh, most of the uh, D&D versions were interpreted fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, again, looking at the special effect versus the in-game effect, uh, you know, frost dragons have uh, a frost breath, black dragons were acid breath, uh, green dragons were uh, poison gas cloud breath, you know, and so it's very simple to use. Oh, and blue, for example, is the uh, has lightning type attacks. You know, the, the three thorax biomorphs. You got the shredder shard, shredder shard beetles, which are basically a rending attack. You've got a uh, poison uh, type of an attack, and that particular one, I forget the actual name of it. Uh, let's see, look it up right here. It is uh, desiccator larva. And then you've got the Electroshop Grubs for the electrical, the Haywire one. <clears throat> so, you can use the uh, sh Shredder Shard Beetles, which have that running attack to represent the frost, you know, freezing cold or even acid rending. Uh, you can use, the, it was a perfect match for the poison gas uh, of the green dragon to use the uh, Desiccator Larva, which is a two-up poison, basically. Uh, Haywire is great for the blue drake. And I went back to the uh, uh, desiccator larva to do the fire breath weapon of the uh, red dragon because it has that flesh bane. It's, it's, it's searing uh, heat. So that's how I decided to interpret those. Now, again, as they get older, you can add some of the other uh, weapon, uh, bio weapons. So, for example, with the... Uh, uh, green dragon, which is a, the green dragons are my favorite, so that's kind of why I'm, I'm really actually working toward that, building one and uh, putting that one on the table next. Uh, you know, the miasma cannon fits that ancient dragon much, much better because it's a huge weapon. Uh, so there's so huge uh, effects and it's a very strong weapon. You can also get, um, like, you can get like sighting talons to increase uh, other of different attacks, or just using something like the strangle of thorn cannon, or my personal favorite, the nova cannon, for that green dra dragon. So that gives them additional attacks, all breath, you know, interpreted as the breath weapons. Uh, with the blue dragon, which is what you see in front of you, she doesn't have wings, but she is she has all the same powers, and that would include, in addition to the electroshock grubs, which is an elect a haywire attack. She would also have, um, <clears throat> I would use the Twin Link Devourers, for example, as, you know, two of them to represent, like, a chain lightning effect. Um, that's just an, uh, one example of what I could do. So, you know, I'm playing around with the different stats uh, to kind of come up with different variations, but it worked really well, and I, I had, then I have five dragons that I could use very easily out of the Hive Tyrant list. Now, when I started thinking about the uh, av interpreting the avatar of Cain at one point I thought about using a you know a dragon rider kind of a concept so I had ended up with the ebony dragon that I've built and you actually probably saw it in an earlier video uh, and so I've actually included that here in this review as well because I decided to add a second set of uh, creatures. I call them great worms uh, because these are the ones, the dragon type creatures that don't have a breath weapon. So these are strictly close combat. Uh, you'll find a lot of dragons uh, in the different legends and stuff didn't have a breath weapon. They're just vicious, gnashing creatures and such. Uh, <coughs> so it fit very, very well. And these matched. I started to use some of the more. Uh, the expanded edition uh, D&D dragons, some of the, you know, they have a brown, they have gray, they have black, uh, not black, uh, ebony. There's stuff, so I didn't want to use the metallic dragons. I wanted to use uh, the non-metallic ones. So the additional set of dragons from D&D, I interpreted them as the great worms. And so I could use any combination 
of the bone swords, rending claws, lash whip and bone swords, you know, to represent different gnashing attacks or tail attacks or what have you, and bites. That way, it was entirely strictly a close combat creature. So one more thing that can be done with the Hive Tyrant entry that was kind of a late addition um, you know, after I decided to make all these different colored dragons was I realized that one of the artifacts actually would make a would be perfect to represent a rider. See, the, the Great Drake has is the Hive Tyrant, right, or Psychers. They can control the other dinosaurs and creatures around them. Well, so can a Dragon Master, one of the the actual uh, warlords and uh, these exodites. So if you, if the rider rides a great drake and has that psychic link or mental uh, communion with the dragon, it just increases his ability. So that's exactly what the Norn Crown does. And so now I can have a great drake and represent by putting a dragon rider on top, he will end up being the Norn Crown. So I think it's, it, it's a really good way to interpret that particular artifact. And I don't know if I'd spend a lot of time with that because it is a 40-point upgrade. But uh, it'll be looking really cool when I have an actual dragon rider. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you like this video. hope you understand kind of how I was able to interpret the Hive Tyrant rules and uh, biomorph options to make a believable representation of one of some of the old D&D dragons. Alright, share, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think below. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.